amended. Yes, um, could you tell me, Mr. Chairman, where in the law or in this one that we're passing that it covers colleges, whether they can have them or not? I suspect that the colleges are not mentioned in there because this is not dealing with the colleges. I think there would have to be uh, a particular law to grant the right to possess on the college. Right, I know they have rules, but when it comes to laws for the state, and constitutional and whatnot, uh, they are adults, so they are allowed to carry. So I was wondering if there was a law on the books that stopped it now, or I, I couldn't find one. Uh, could you restate the question? <laughs> 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 I can, address, I can address that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Thaw, yeah. uh, I asked the question of is, is there a law on the books that would keep these out of the colleges? I there, couldn't find there, one. There is a federal law that says that you can't carry a firearm on a, in a school zone unless you have a permit, a valid permit from the state you're, you're in, is my understanding of, yeah. of the current statute. There's no state statute. And second question, so being a constitutional right, uh, could the young person argue that? You could probably argue, but even under uh, the current laws, uh, for example, a business could tell people they don't want them carrying guns in, so the college could say you couldn't carry, we don't want them on the campus, and they could prevent it under that sort of circumstance. Okay, and with this constitutional right, this bill, the businesses still can say they're not allowed in their place of business. They can say they don't, they don't wish to serve them. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Thank but you. Conversely, the man carrying a firearm can choose not to do business with that person. So, yes. two-edged sword. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Representative Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion for Senate Bill 116, opt to pass as amended. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Just give me one second. Time's up. <laughs> you seconded? I did. You did. Okay. Thank you, Representative Comote. I thought oh, just very brief. Okay, Representative Burke. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now that it's been amended, I think it's an excellent bill. You know, the Constitution is very straightforward on what it says, and this will bring New Hampshire in line with the Constitution. So I would hope everybody will support it as I will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Any question? First? Yes. If, if we're changing this law because the existing law is somehow unconstitutional, and it's been on the books for decades, uh, and it's never been successfully challenged as its constitutionality, I understand there have been some challenges individual permits, denials, and that kind of thing. But not the underlying law itself, because the Supreme Court has ruled that states can, in fact, impose um, some kind of re uh, regulations on, on, on this kind of thing. They're not um, prevented from doing so. So I'm wondering why suddenly, uh, after decades, this law is now unconstitutional, and so we have to change it. There's no, I don't believe there's any uh, attempt to say that the law has been unconstitutional in the past. I believe the, uh, the attempt to change it now is based upon the citizens' request for their, to uh, be able to carry that way, based upon what they see in other states. That's my understanding of the reason for the bill. President <coughs> Walker. It, it also does solve a problem. If, you, if the individual has a license to carry and they're going into a business where the firearm is not allowed, such as the post office, and he leaves the gun in the car, and his wife is in the car, and his wife doesn't have a, a license, she's now got a loaded gun in the car, she's separate to the law. This would solve that problem, I'm correct. 
Has that ever been a problem? Uh, yes, it has. And what's happened? They were charged for, for possession of a concealed firearm. Really? A police officer would charge the wife sitting in the car, even though the husband was not in the car? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It has happened. I wouldn't say that every police officer would do it, but it has happened. And what happened to her? I have no idea. I do know that as a police officer, I carry, and I carry, I have a gun in the car very often, and there has been an occasion when through everything I've been rushing around trying to do, I forgot and left it in the glove compartment and my wife used the car. And I was extremely concerned about the fact that she was in violation of the law until I could recover the weapon. You didn't give her a ticket or anything? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know my wife. <laughs> she, she got a verbal warning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with, with all due respect to that particular scenario and with all due respect to my colleagues, I, I'm going to vote against this and I'd like to take a minute to tell you why. Maybe I'll change some minds. I keep hearing the argument, of course, we've been inundated with emails that, you know, if criminals want to carry a seal, they will. That's true. They'll drive a car drunk, and, and that's true. They'll break into a house, and that's true. But why remove the penalty? Why make it easier? If they're caught, why give them a free pass? You can carry concealed in the state of New Hampshire. You apply for a license, pay your $10. Uh, you, it's up to 14 days, but I've approved permits in my capacity as deputy chief in, in, in 24 hours for exigent circumstances. Why change it? Um, there's nothing wrong with doing even a cursory background check on an individual wanting to carry death on his or her head concealed. I just don't understand after 90 years why all of a sudden this is an issue. And I think it's going to be a big mistake for the state. So I'm going to be voting against this. Anything further? Yes. Representative um, I was asked to sit in on this committee and I had researched the underlying House bill, which is not before us today. And yesterday I listened to four plus hours of the Senate bill hearings before I came in here today. I also went back and researched the forms that needed to be filled out for the pistol licensure. I looked at additional state law that uh, was actually affecting these folks. And I have to say, I was on the fence on this, and I still am on the fence. However, I do believe that an individual that has the right to carry a gun should not be penalized in any way if they remove their sweater or if they remove their jacket. And for that reason, I am going to support this bill with some reservations that I still have. But I am going to support this bill here and hopefully it'll go to the full house and everybody will have an opportunity at that point. Yes, um, I just would like to say that uh, I understand where everybody's coming from, but I have not read in the Porch Matero or the Union Leader or anything else where anybody has been arrested for taking off their jacket because they have that right to carry anyway out in the open. I just feel as though that we're opening up a can of worms. And if this affected people, why hasn't somebody done it in the past 90 years? And you know, it's just a certain group of people that are putting the fear of God in people out there that we're all going to be taken over. And we're going to take their guns. Nobody has any intentions of taking anybody's guns. But I don't think it really is terrible that you spend $10 to have a permit for four years. It's a something that goes on, it's a law, and it should stay on the books. And it has become a political issue mm -hmm. instead of a real issue. Yeah, I'd like to point out to everybody that in the New Hampshire Constitution, the right to keep and bear arms wasn't even in there until 1983. It wasn't even part of our Constitution. We were, in that sense, somewhat similar to Vermont, except for the carrying part of it. But it is part of our, our Constitution now. When it was first su submitted to the people to be accepted, we rejected it because it gave the legislature the right to determine how they would be carried. And it was a narrow uh, a, a vote. 
the way we were able to defeat that. And then it came back the way it presently reads. So I think it's, it's an issue that has always been out there. And Maine is debating it now. Vermont has had it forever. Since 1791, they haven't had any laws concerning firearms. Uh, I think this is not, uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again. When it comes to the Second Amendment, that's the only amendment that you have to consistently ask permission to exercise. No one requires you to get a permit before you write a letter to the editor. Nobody requires you to make an application to uh, practice your religion. You don't have to get certified in order to invoke your uh, Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. You don't have to get uh, a special permit to be free from uh, get unreasonable search and seizure. But when it comes to the Second Amendment, everybody jumps on for no good reason. And uh, uh, with all due respect to uh, Representative Tanlakis, every time uh, I read the paper, there is some politician somewhere who says we're going to take all the guns. And the permit system we have right now is the perfect mechanism to start that. Because if you're going to confiscate guns, where's the best place to go? To the list of gun owners that carry. Representative Hirsch. Thank you. Um, just a response to that. Uh, I mean, letters to the editor, practicing religion, search and seizures, they don't harm people physically. They don't threaten people with bodily harm, you know, by, by, by doing that. You know, you're not carrying something that can kill somebody, be taken away from you and, and, and be used on you. Um, I mean, so <coughs> comparison Second Amendment to other amendments, I think, is just doesn't hold up. Um, we do have the right to, to protect public safety, and I think that's where this falls, most primarily is in public safety and concerns for public safety. Um, just recently in Bedford, I, I don't think that that case is, is done yet, but I think there's more to come out about that. But that the husband involved in that case where the woman killed her children and killed herself was um, was a plaintiff in a Supreme Court case that restored his weapons and ammunition to him, and they were in the house. And um, and it, 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 this I think that's a very telling, although incomplete story, but I think it's typical of the kind of public safety threat that a bill like this will pose to our society. And I don't want to take a chance and find out whether or not it's going to, you know, have any effect. Um, you know, people say that, that we don't need more restrictions because we're a safe state. <coughs> so what do we do now? Start re removing restrictions until we no longer are safe? Is, is, is that the direction we want to go in? I don't think so. And I will be opposing this. Yes, uh, I had called yesterday from people that they had been notified that this was going to be voted on today. And they asked me the question of what about my rights? I know the gun owners have rights and I respect it, but what about my rights when I'm frightened of guns and I don't want to be around? And I will be voting against it too. President Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, no, no bill of rights is absolute. I can't yell fire in a crowded theater where there's no fire. I have to either sh show a valid ID when I vote or sign an affidavit that I am who I say I am. So that is a restriction on voting, which is a basic right. Um, there, there are restrictions. I mean, the, the Supreme Court has placed restrictions even on the Second Amendment. I cannot own a howitzer under the Second Amendment. I can't own a machine gun under the, under the Second Amendment. I think it's balance. I think what we're talking about here is common sense balance, and and I, and let's not lose sight of that issue. I'm back with yeah, I like to take a little issue with what you just said. Okay. You can own a machine gun. Yeah. You just pay the federal tax. You can own a machine gun. It goes through a background check. It takes about six months. Okay. I stand corrected. I thought it was. I thought there was a shotgun. There was a restriction in 1973 that the Supreme Court placed on owning a, a sawed-off shotgun, and I thought that carried over to fully automatic machine guns. No, no, but you, you can still okay. Still I stand corrected on that. Go. All right. And I'll go a step further and say that the only time, in my knowledge, that anybody has ever misused a machine gun was a law enforcement officer. 
shot at a wife. Okay. I was just going to echo that. Uh, you, you can own a machine gun, you can own a thought out shotgun, uh, you can own a short barrel rifle, you can own an automatic pistol, you can own a howitzer if you're willing to go through the process that's set out by, uh, I believe it's uh, the Gun Control Act of uh, 34, 68, and 86. They're all, they're all covered. Would you like to shoot my cannon? Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I just need to uh, say something because it bothered me. Um, the simple fact that the, that the unfortunate incident that took place in Bedford um, is, has absolutely nothing to do with this bill. Because the man, man was found not to be guilty of a, of a domestic violence issue and the weapons were returned to him by a court. Therefore, he legally was able to possess weapons, and in fact, I believe he was a firearms dealer. Therefore, uh, the, his wife could have gotten the, got the firearm almost anywhere if she intended to do what she did. The simple fact that, that they were in the house, uh, you don't need a permit to have a gun in the house. You can have a gun in the house no matter what you want to do. So I don't think that, is, that particular incident is relevant to, to what we're discussing now. Two kids anyway. Well, I don't disagree with you. I think it's a very tragic thing, and I wish there was some way we could have stopped it. But my guess is there's no way we could have stopped it. Yeah. So it just. And, uh, Resident Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, I totally agree with the Bedford situation. She, you know, I don't even know if she has a concealed weapons permit. Uh, so, you know, nobody knows. Uh, that's not being released at this time. I just look at. You know, it had nothing to do with this bill, so I really, you know, don't even think it should have been brought up. When it comes to the safety, as the fine representative said, uh, everybody knows I am from Vermont. And I know you're not going to like to hear this, but as I said to the fine state trooper friend of ours, Vermont is the second safest place in the world. There's no shootouts at, at the bridges, you know, or, or out on the streets. I mean, it just does not happen. In the case that the fine representative brought up about Bedford, uh, sadly, that happens everywhere, and it happens in Vermont. It's just sad. Uh, but again, this bill has nothing to do with that. But it does have to do with, you know, it, it's, it's a good bill. It, uh, you know, uh, Kentucky just signed it. Uh, you know, West Virginia is going to bring it back, and they will. You know, override it again. Maine is the next thing to passing it. It will be passed by the end of June, they say. Uh, you know, just it, it's a good bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Penn, you have something you want to say? No. Okay. no. Representative Perry. Thank you. Um, I brought up the Bedford incident, incident because of the fact that his restoration of a permit um, is definitely germane to this issue. Um, whether or not, and we don't know all the details, and maybe that's probably, maybe why I should have stayed away from it, but I am very suspicious as to why uh, all this happened. I think, I don't know, I, I'm not a, a clear point. But um, the other point I want to make is, is uh, just, just a point of fact, the NRA is having its national convention now talk about constitutional rights. And they declared that no one can bring a, um, a weapon into the convention um, with a firing pin. Um, so here's a situation where we have the NRA having a national convention, and they are restricting their own members from carrying a weapon um, into the, the, uh, the convention. So I, I find it both ironic and a little comical uh, uh, in light of all this discussion about constitutional rights. Now, Yes, since we mentioned the NRA, uh, I was very thrilled to have my newspaper call me because they had a letter from the NRA that, that, that <coughs> the reporter did for them to put pressure on me to vote for this. And so I think uh, I'm beginning to wonder what the NRA represents. Do you feel the pressure? Don't be any pressure. No, I didn't feel any pressure. <laughs> any further questions? Okay. Seeing none.
Will the clerk call a roll? Representative Welch. Yes. Representative Keogh. Yes. Representative Fash. Yes. Representative Berg. Yes. Representative Sweeney. Yes. Representative Barnes. Yes. Representative Como. Yes. Representative Martin. Yes. Representative Pangalakis. No. Representative Barubi. No. Representative oh. Robinson. <coughs> no. Representative uh, Cushion. No. <coughs> Representative Hurst. No. Representative DeSasia. No. Okay. Representative Rowley. Is it Rowley? It's Rowley. Rowley. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. I'm representing the chair. I'm sorry. You're forget me no, again, I won't. Well, I, when I start counting, I realize that. Yes. Oh, it only hurts a little while. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think we're ready to go. And obviously, it, this is not a consent calendar issue. Uh, but, uh, uh, I would expect that the uh, blurb would get to me as soon as possible. Is it Bradley one? Can you just come No. I'll take it. Is yours the Bradley one? Is it 01093? Yes. Yeah. 1093. You got it now?